Hey guys, what's up? It's Savannah. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another true crime episode here on my YouTube channel. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button, whichever side it's on. I can never get it right. Hit that post notification bell, that way you never miss a video. And if you like my true crime videos, make sure you subscribe to my podcast called Killer Instinct. The link is always in the description for you guys to check it out, but you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any other podcast platform. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, today we are talking about the death of 17 year old Kendrick Johnson. Before we get started, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Pros. Pros has quickly become my new obsession and has completely changed my hair care game for the better. I know I personally am someone who has always struggled with having really oily roots, but my ends get so dry because I bleach them all the time. So because of this, I am someone who in the past has been extremely guilty of washing my hair every single day. I know it's bad for you, I know, don't yell at me. But the reason I did that is because my hair always had a tendency to start producing a lot of oil after just one wash. So more so recently, I've really wanted to just step up my hair care game. I love skincare, I love beauty, and I wanted to step up my hair care game as well. And that is when I stumbled across Pros. Pros is a hair care brand that creates a customized shampoo and conditioner based on your personal hair analysis. Pros will give you an online quiz that will dive in to every possible factor that could potentially affect your hair health. I'm talking diet, I'm talking exercise, and even as far as where you live and the climate of where you live and how that could have an effect on your hair as well. Pros has over 50 billion, with a B, billion formula combinations, and they are a completely clean company, which I love. Every formula is sustainably sourced and cruelty-free. I have noticed a huge difference in my hair since beginning to use Pros, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. So if you guys want to check out Pros today, you can take the free in-depth hair quiz and get 15% off your first order when you go to pros.com slash killer. Again, that is pros, which is P-R-O-S-E dot com slash killer. I'll have all the links in the description box below. And with that being said, let's just jump right on into this case. So like I said in the beginning, today we are discussing the Kendrick Johnson case. Kendrick was 17 years old when he was found dead inside his school gymnasium inside of a wrestling gym mat on January 11th, 2013. Now you guys are going to see as we go through this case that there are a lot of questions, way more questions than there are answers in this one. And this is a closed case, but people have been really striving for the authorities to reopen this case. I also will have the petition if you want to sign the petition for authorities to reopen this case. I'll have that linked in the description box below as well for you. Kendrick Johnson was born on October 10th, 1995 to his parents, Kenneth and Jackie Johnson. Kendrick was described as a young man who just, he kept to himself. He was more of the quiet kid, but he loved to play sports. He was super athletic in high school. He played basketball and football. His mom described him as the jokester of the family. He was a key and essential part of their family. He was described as an incredibly loving son, the life of their home, and the joy of their lives. And Kendrick's father, Kenneth, said that Kendrick was the son that everyone wished they could have. Every parent would want a son like Kendrick. He was described as just having good manners manners. He was an overall respectable young man, and he was just someone that a lot of people loved. So Kendrick grew up with his family in Valdosta, Georgia, and he ended up attending Lowndes High School. So we are just going to jump right to January 10th, 2013. And this day started off like any normal average day for Kendrick. January 10th was the second day back to school after Christmas vacation, and Kendrick's plans were to go to school, attend his classes, and then following school, he was planning on attending a school basketball game, so he was going to go to that, and then his plan was just to go home straight afterwards. Kendrick's parents were both aware of Kendrick's plans that day and knew that he was the type of person that would always call them if there was something wrong or if there was a change of plans or if he was planning on being home later than he originally expected to. He was always the type to get in contact with one of his parents and let him know what was going on, which is why when Kendrick never made it back home on January 10th, 2013, his mother Jackie knew that something was very wrong. After Kendrick didn't make it home at about 10 o'clock p.m. on January 10th, Jackie decided that she was going to drive to the high school herself and see if she could find Kendrick there. So she drove from her house to Lowndes High School, drove around the area for a little bit in hopes that maybe she would stumble across Kendrick. However, she never did. And that is why about two and a half hours later, at about 12.30 a.m., Jackie decided to call the authorities 
authorities and file a missing persons report for Kendrick. So now we move on to the following day. So now we are at January 11th, 2013. Authorities had been made aware of Kendrick's disappearance and back at Lowndes High School, the school that Kendrick attended in the old gymnasium during the morning hours at about 10 o'clock, there was a class called Life Sports that was being taught at this time by a man named Coach Philip Pipelo. The class was being taught in the school's old gym. So sometimes larger schools will do this. They'll have two separate gyms. They'll have an old gym and they'll have a new gym. And this class was being held in what was referred to as the old gymnasium. And so life sports was happening at this time. And to kind of set the picture up for you, you have a group of students who are in this gym with the coach at this time preparing for their class. And in the right hand corner of this gym, there were several wrestling mats and these mats were facing vertical. So they were facing straight up and this was typical. It's where the wrestling mats were usually kept at this school. And a couple of the students in the beginning of the class decided to go over to the wrestling mats and kind of just started playing around on them and climbing on top of them. And when one of these students climbed on top of the wrestling mat, they noticed what looked to be a pair of legs sticking straight up out of the wrestling mat. Whenever I describe this, I feel like I'm not describing it accurately. So to give you a visual, it's like, like this was the wrestling mat and someone looks over into it, they see two legs sticking up. And obviously seeing this is very alarming. It's not something you typically see. And so when the student saw this, she ended up calling over Coach Phillip and Coach Phillip came over, saw what the student was seeing. Because the mat was vertical, Coach Phillip couldn't physically pull this person up from out of the mat. So he decided to lay the mat from vertical to horizontal and unroll the mat. And when he did that, that is when he discovered Kendrick Johnson's body had been stuck inside this wrestling mat and he was unfortunately deceased. From what I have seen, obviously Coach Phillip was extremely in shock. He was hysterical, he was extremely upset and his first instinct was to get all of the kids that were in the gym out so they did not have to see it. And I believe it was one of the students actually who was in that gym ended up calling 911. Coach Phillip said he doesn't remember if it was him or if it was a student. I believe there were multiple students who believe that they were the one to call 911. So 911 was called regardless and authorities immediately arrived at Lowndes High School. Once Kendrick's body was found, there was an automatic lockdown placed on the entire school and Jackie, Kendrick's mother, was actually at the high school at the time that her son's body had been found because she was printing out missing persons flyers at the school. So she found out about this pretty much when everyone else did. So I wanna talk briefly about the condition that Kendrick was found in for multiple reasons I wanna do this. Number one, I think that it is important in this case and when it comes to the cause of death. But the other reason I want to talk about Kendrick's condition is because I kind of want to warn you guys. I know a lot of you, which is great by the way, tend to go off and do your own individual research sometimes with different cases. However, I want to warn you because when you Google Kendrick Johnson, there are a lot of pictures pictures out there of him after he had already passed away. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a case where there was as many pictures of the victim after they had died as there are from Kendrick. So the reason I'm telling you this is because if you do end up go looking up those pictures, which I will never put a picture of someone after they're deceased on my channel, I just think it's it's not my thing. If you want to go look them up, by all means you can. I just want to warn you because it is very graphic and can be pretty disturbing and scary, honestly. So when Kendrick was found, his face was completely swollen. And a lot of that probably had to do with the fact that he was upside down because his feet were sticking straight up in that wrestling mat. So he was facing upside down. So when you're facing upside down, all the blood rushes to your head. And so because of that, that probably had a very big part in why his face was so swollen. His injuries honestly made him pretty much completely unrecognizable. His face looks like it had been completely smashed in. So in the wrestling mat that Kendrick was found in, authorities also found two pairs of shoes. One of the shoes was found right underneath Kendrick's head and the other pair to that shoe was actually found outside of the wrestling mat. So one of the shoes was found right underneath Kendrick's head and the other one was outside of the mat and then the other pair of shoes was found actually tucked behind Kendrick's legs, which we're going to get into in a little bit. Kendrick was found wearing blue jeans, a t-shirt, and socks. He was not wearing shoes when he was found. Now what's interesting here is that authorities actually waited six 
hours to contact the coroner and we're going to get into how the police handled this case in a little bit but i wanted to note here because this is just the timeline of it all they waited six hours to contact the coroner to notify them about kendrick's death i don't believe they've ever really given an explanation as to why they waited so long and once the coroner was notified about kendrick's death kendrick's body was sent off to the gbi which is the georgia bureau of investigations and kendrick's body was sent there for an initial autopsy. Now the autopsy results for Kendrick's first autopsy actually came back exceedingly quickly. They came back within 24 hours and it was presumed that Kendrick's cause of death was suffocation. And once this happened, the medical examiner and the authorities just kind of chalked Kendrick's death up to being some major freak accident. Authorities believe that Kendrick had been walking around the gym and for whatever reason was climbing on top of the wrestling mats and while he was doing this he accidentally dropped one of his shoes into the wrestling mats and authorities believed that Kendrick tried to reach into the wrestling mat to grab his shoe. However, when he did that he ended up falling into the mat and getting stuck upside down which ultimately led to him suffocating and passing away. Now what's interesting to note here and something that I've always gone back to on this case is just dimensions and measurements and how this all lines up. And what I mean by that is that Kendrick's shoulder width was 19 inches. And if he fell like the authorities claimed head first into this wrestling mat, the mat would have at least had to have been wide enough for Kendrick to fall into it. So Kendrick's shoulder width was 19 inches. However, the width of the mat when it was rolled up was only 14 inches wide. So I'm not exactly sure how that works. I'm not sure how you fit something that is 19 inches wide into something that is 14 inches wide. And along with this, Kendrick's father actually tried to recreate this. He tried to recreate falling into a wrestling mat. He didn't do it vertically, so he would be facing upside down, but he had the mat laying down horizontally and he tried to fit his shoulders into the mat and he actually wasn't even able to get past his head. Now, I'm not sure if Kenneth, Kendrick's father, has the exact same dimensions as Kendrick as far as shoulder width goes. However, it does go to show that you can't really fit something 19 inches wide into something that is 14 inches. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing that I wanted to pick your guys' brains on a little bit is Kendrick's body and how his body was found. Kendrick's body was found with his arms straight to his sides. So he was upside down, but his arms were straight to each of his sides. And this brought up a lot of questions to a lot of people because if Kendrick was trying to reach down into this wrestling mat to grab one of his shoes, you would think one of his arms would either be found kind of disfigured or dislocated by his side, or it would be found straight above his head. However, both of his arms were found just straight to his side. So that is also something to keep in mind about Kendrick's positioning when his body was discovered. So the next thing authorities wanted to do in this case is they wanted to look at the security camera footage that was inside of the old gym where Kendrick's body was discovered, as well as the cameras that surrounded the gym. They wanted to look at all of them. So authorities were able to get access to the cameras inside of the gym. They also got access to the cameras in the hallways surrounding the gym, as well as the camera that faces the exterior entrance of the gym. Now, when authorities did this, they were able to see footage of Kendrick entering the old gymnasium where his body would later be discovered at 1.09 p.m. The cameras show Kendrick walking to the right-hand corner of the gym, which is where the wrestling mats were located. I'm gonna have links in the description box below to the surveillance footage so you guys can check it out for yourself if you're interested. But what the surveillance footage shows is actually pretty interesting because when Kendrick walks into the gym, he walks in by himself. However, it does appear that there is someone else walking in the gym at the same time that he does. They're not walking together. It doesn't look like they're friends. It just kind of looks like they're both in the same place at the same time. And then it's just assumed that that person that was also in the gym just walks out of the gym because the gym in the school was kind of used as a pathway to get from point A to point B. A lot of the kids would walk through the gym to get to the other side of the school, so it wasn't unusual for kids to be walking throughout it in between class periods. So Kendrick's seen walking in at 1.09 p.m. and this other person that is also in the gym with him leaves the gym and Kendrick walks off into the right-hand corner where the wrestling mats are. Now only three minutes 
later there is a group of kids that walk into the gym now these kids that walk into the gym only a couple minutes after kendrick they don't seem thrown off by anything they don't seem like they see kendrick falling into a wrestling mat they don't seem like they're watching someone struggle inside of a wrestling mat they don't seem like they're hearing anyone screaming they just simply walk in and walk straight out now kendrick was never seen leaving the gym on camera and a lot of people have questioned how would it be that Kendrick falls into this wrestling mat and only three minutes later a group of kids comes in and they don't see Kendrick they don't see a struggle they don't see anything that would make them think that even the slightest thing is wrong and they just walk straight out how did this all happen so quickly now CNN actually went as far as hiring a professional video surveillance team to scour through the countless hours of footage that occurred on January 10th and January 11th in this old gym this surveillance team had come to the conclusion that the files that they had been given were not the original video files that would just come straight from the camera they said that the files had been altered in a number of different ways and some of the files weren't processed correctly so they didn't offer for proper playback. This team also came back and said that there is a whole of time that is unaccounted for in the footage that they had been provided with. And mind you, there were four different surveillance cameras, so four different footages that this team had gone through. And they collectively came to the agreement that all four cameras had a piece of time missing. The team said that the cameras were all motion activated, so these cameras typically should start the way that they're supposed to work. They turn on and start recording when the sun goes up, and then they turn off when the sun goes down but that was not the case that happened here and I'm gonna look over here just so I get the time frame exactly correct so on the day of January 10th the first camera captures a surveillance footage starting from the early morning up until 1204 p.m. and then it stops recording and then it begins recording again at 109 p.m. the second camera does the same thing it starts recording in the morning up until 1105 a.m and then it stops recording and picks up two hours later at 1 15 p.m. Third camera is almost the same thing. It films in the morning up until about 11.05 a.m. and then starts filming again at 1 16 p.m. And the final camera films that morning up until 12.04 p.m. and then picks right back up at 1 09 p.m. The surveillance team also said that following the next hour after 1 09 p.m. there were weird gaps in the footage that they had been given as well. There were decent periods of time where these cameras just stopped recording. So as far as Kendrick's first autopsy goes, Kendrick's parents, Jackie and Kenneth, were not pleased with this autopsy report. From day one since Kendrick's death, they have believed that there was some sort of foul play involved. So after his first autopsy resort came back so quickly with suffocation, Kendrick's parents actually went out of their way and hired a private pathologist named Dr. William Anderson. Now, William Anderson, like I said, was a private pathologist and he was hired to perform a second autopsy on Kendrick. So because at this point Kendrick had already been laid to rest and buried, his body was actually exhumed. So he was dug back up from the ground and sent to William Anderson to do this second autopsy. However, when William Anderson went in to do this autopsy, he found something completely shocking. So when this second autopsy was supposed to be performed, it was discovered that all of Kendrick's organs had been removed from his body and he had been stuffed with crumbled up pieces of newspaper. So when Kendrick's family heard about this, they were completely blindsided because they had absolutely no idea and were not aware of the fact that after the initial autopsy, Kendrick's organs were not placed back into his body. So Kendrick's parents got in contact with the funeral home and the funeral home that they used is the Harrington Funeral Home in Georgia. And the reason that Kendrick's parents got in contact with the funeral home is because the funeral home is responsible for processing 
Kendrick's body following the initial autopsy. And the funeral home told Kendrick's parents that Kendrick's body was sent to them without any organs in his body. So it was not like the funeral home was responsible for taking out all of his organs. His organs had already been removed by the time he arrived at the funeral home. Now, as far as the newspaper thing goes, I know it sounds very like, what the heck? But this actually isn't the most uncommon thing when I looked more into it. Sometimes funeral homes will stuff a body with cotton balls. Some do also use newspapers. So placing items like that inside of a body is not the most outlandish thing that's ever happened. But the more concerning factor here is the fact that Kendrick's parents were never aware that Kendrick's organs were not placed back into his body. So even after not having any of his organs, they still decided to go through with the second autopsy. And when this happened, the cause of death was actually found to be blunt force trauma to the back of Kendrick's head. Now, what the medical examiner found was actually a very small bruise on the back of Kendrick's neck. And this was a very, very small bruise. But this medical examiner believes that Kendrick was hit in the back of the neck and that's what caused the bruise. And that even though it's just a small bruise, it had an incredible impact and hit a certain point that essentially was the cause of Kendrick's death. Dr. William Anderson confirmed that this mark on the back of his neck was not consistent with suffocation. So now you have an initial autopsy report that came back with the cause of death of suffocation and a second autopsy report that came back with the cause of death of blunt force trauma. So now we get to the point in this case where things start to get a little bit messy. So Kendrick's parents actually ended up filing a wrongful death lawsuit against Lowndes High School. They sued the Board of Education, the superintendent, as well as the principal of the school at the time. The lawsuit claimed that Kendrick did not die after falling into a wrestling mat and suffocating, but instead he had been attacked and murdered and placed into the mat to cover everything up and make it look like he had suffocated. The lawsuit also focused heavily on race and Kendrick's parents claimed that because Kendrick was black, the case wasn't being taken as seriously as it needed to be. So this lawsuit also mentioned the name of two other students that attended Lowndes High School. Jackie, Kendrick's mother, had said that she had actually called the school to inform them that Kendrick had told her that he was being harassed by this student. Now this student is a man named Brandon Bell and Brandon Bell has a younger brother named Brian Bell and their father actually, I don't know if he still is, he did work as an FBI agent so he was involved in law enforcement. Now Jackie had said that Kendrick had complained to her multiple times that Brandon and Brian had harassed him, they were bullying him, and that this had been going on for a decent period of time. And because of this, Brandon and Brian have really been looked at in this investigation as potentially having something to do with Kendrick's death. However, obviously both boys claim that they were in no way, shape, or form involved with Kendrick's death and they were actually friends with Kendrick. They actually liked him. Of course, Jackie tells a different story and says that that's not the case. They were never friends and that those boys were harassing her son. So Ebony Magazine, which is a very popular magazine if you guys are unaware of it, they actually posted an article a while back at this point, but they posted an article that didn't name Brandon and Brian as suspects or anything like that, but they definitely insinuated that Brandon and Brian could have been involved in Kendrick's death. They didn't name names, but they basically, it was like a subtweet in an article. Now, because of this, Brandon and Brian's parents actually filed a $5 million lawsuit against Ebony Magazine and won. A lot of people have pointed out the fact that Brandon and Brian haven't really helped a lot when it comes to the investigation. They haven't really been active in the investigation. A lot of people have said that's because they had nothing to do with it. And a lot of people have said that's because they're trying not to get involved and they're trying to cover something up. And when I was doing my research and trying to figure all of this out, a big thing that I was trying to figure out is motive. Like why in the world were Brandon and Brian Bell being looked at as people who could be responsible for Kendrick's death? And when I looked more into it, there have been rumors circulating that Brandon and Kendrick had some tension between each other and had been feuding over a similar love interest. I'm not exactly sure the specifics of this. I'm not sure if Kendrick got with someone that Brandon liked. I'm not sure if it was a girlfriend. I'm not sure if Brandon's girlfriend liked Kendrick. I'm not sure about any of it. That part of it has never been released. Like the clear and actual motive has never been released, but those are just the rumors that have been circulating. But it doesn't stop there because in January of 2015, Kendrick's parents filed an $100 million dollar 
lawsuit against Randy Bell, who is Brandon and Brian Bell's father, claiming that he instructed both of his boys to murder Kendrick. Now this lawsuit was eventually dropped because there really isn't any proof to go along with this, but it is important to note that this was a thing at some point. Now at the point after the lawsuit gets dropped, it definitely gets more messy from here. Kendrick's family actually starts getting sued at this point by different attorney's offices, as well as there were lawsuits against them from the people whose names were being dragged through this by Kendrick's parents who thought that they could have had something to do with this. So at this point, Kendrick's parents had a a bunch of money to be paid to attorneys as well as a bunch of defamation lawsuits by other people who were trying to go after them as well. Now along with this there was also something that was discovered about Kendrick's parents that definitely made people question their credibility and that was the fact that following Kendrick's death you know Kendrick's family was posting all over social media they were making posters and flyers and walking around their city and demanding justice with these flyers and on pretty much almost all of these flyers they had used a picture which the picture is on Line. you can find the picture it's kind of what I was saying in the beginning of the video it was a picture of Kendrick after he had passed away and they used this picture to kind of prove a point of something happened to our son like this was not just some accident something happened to him there was foul play involved and so they used this picture saying this is what he looked like right after he was found and they put that picture on all of the posters but the problem came to be when it was later discovered that this picture that Kendrick's parents had been using claiming it was what Kendrick looked like right after his body had been discovered was actually a picture of Kendrick after his first autopsy. Now, when I first read this, I didn't really understand what the big deal was, honestly, but apparently there is a difference. After a body goes through an autopsy, it can look a little bit different. And it was not as much of that as it was the fact that Kendrick's parents were saying, this is what he looked like when he was found. And that just wasn't the case. So because they dropped the lawsuit against Randy Bell, they were being sued by people for defamation lawsuits, and they were using a picture claiming it was one thing when it was really another thing. Thing, a lot of people questioned Kendrick's parents' credibility. I need to say something though. You never know how you're going to deal with something like this until it happens to you. We say that all the time here. You know, you never know how you would handle a situation like this. You never know how you're going to grieve. And it's very possible that Kendrick's parents just thought that he wasn't getting the justice that he deserved. His case wasn't being taken seriously enough and they were doing everything that they could. Does that mean that they went about it the right way? Maybe not. There are probably things that they could have done differently, but if they were just trying to do whatever they could to desperately get justice for their son, it makes sense to me as to why they would do some of the things that they would do in order to get people's attention and make people listen. So I want to talk about the police work in this case for a second, because like I mentioned in the beginning, the police work in this case was really below par for multiple reasons. The first one, like I mentioned, was that authorities waited six hours to notify the coroner that Kendrick had passed away. I'm not sure why you would ever wait six hours to notify the coroner. There's never been a proper explanation for it. Along with that, the crime scene was not taped off by authorities and authorities also didn't wear protective covering gear when walking through the crime scene, which was the gym. So protocol for any crime scene is to wear protective covering gear. You wear gloves, you wear foot covers, you wear things like that. That way you prevent the possibility of cross-contamination and it also holds the integrity of the DNA and evidence evidence that could possibly be there. When it came to Kendrick's case, however, authorities did not wear the foot covers that they are supposed to do. So they were just freely walking throughout this gym, leaving their footprints on top of other footprints, and it's just not allowed. It's not what you're supposed to do in a situation like that. Now, in the gym that Kendrick was found in, authorities also found several other items. One of those items was a pair of shoes, and the second item was a hoodie. Now, Kendrick's parents have confirmed that neither of those items have belonged to Kendrick. However, they have never identified who those items belonged to ever. There have been conflicting reports if police even took those items in as evidence. The police report said that they did, but there's other reports out there that said that they did not. And so it's kind of conflicting, but those items were found in the gym and they were never identified as to who they belonged to. Now, in my opinion, the more telling piece of evidence that was found in this gym was actually blood. Authorities found blood inside of the gym that Kendrick 
was found in. Now, when authorities found this blood, they tested the blood and confirmed that it did not belong to Kendrick. And they also said that the blood had been there for too long. So it was not valid in this investigation and they never figured out who that blood belong to. Now you guys can tell me what you think in the comments below and I really want to hear what you have to say, but wouldn't you want to just kind of cross everything off the list that you could? Like even if you're saying, okay, this blood was from way too long ago, it couldn't be involved in this investigation, why not just confirm who it belongs to? That way you're a hundred percent certain. Blood is what investigators look for. Like they're looking for any sign of blood when it comes to basically any other investigation. So why when you find blood here, you just kind of knock it off as, oh, it's not Kendrick's and it's too old to be here so we're just gonna move on from it so at this point in the investigation nothing really was happening authorities were convinced that this was a freak accident that kendrick's cause of death was suffocation and that was that and there was nothing more to it kendrick's parents still and to this day are on the mindset of there is way more to this story foul play was involved and this case isn't being taken as seriously as it needs to be so because of that there was a third autopsy performed. Back in 2018, the third autopsy was performed and the cause of death for Kendrick came back again as blunt force trauma to the back of his head. So now you have one autopsy report saying that the cause of death was suffocation and two that are saying blunt force trauma. And if you were to look up the pictures of what Kendrick looked like following his death, you would believe blunt force trauma. Like I said, Kendrick's face looked like it had gone through it. So because of that, it doesn't seem too far off, but I'm not a medical examiner, so I don't know. So I want to talk about something that I found in the police report of this case, and I'll try to link the police report in the description box below as well. You do have to sign up for something to read the full police report, but you can like subscribe and then unsubscribe so you don't have to pay anything. You can do like a free trial, which is what I did. And so when I searched through this police report, I found that on January 11th, 2013, the day that Kendrick's body was discovered, there was a female student who went to the sheriff's office to report some suspicious activity. According to the police report, this female student had reported to the sheriff that there was another male student who had actually made a Facebook post. And I believe it was the same day, either January 10th or January 11th, that this Facebook post was made. And the post was from an unnamed person. They didn't name the person in the police report, but the post said, and I'm going to look over here so I get it right, quote, when you start messing with goons, bodies start showing up end quote. It was reported that shortly after this Facebook post was up was uploaded, the Facebook account in and of itself had been deactivated. This female student who reported this also said that prior to Kendrick's death, this student had made another Facebook post that said he has to, quote, start killing them off one by one. Now, this female student also explained to authorities that Kendrick was a part of this group. Kendrick and his friends were a part of this group called the CVC, which stands for the Clietville Click. This female student alleged that the person who posted these Facebook statuses was actually feuding with someone from the CVC because they had a similar love interest. Now, I'm not sure who the student is and I can't confidently say that this is Brandon Bell because that kind of has a similar rumor mill surrounding it, that this was over a girl or a similar love interest. It's very possible that this was someone completely different who we just don't know the name of yet who was posting these Facebook statuses, but I definitely think that the timing is very interesting. So let's talk about theories because there's really no more information that we have left on this case as far as evidence, as far as facts. Let's talk about theories. Now, the first theory we have is the theory that authorities are going with, which was this was just some freak accident. Kendrick was climbing on top of wrestling mats. He dropped his shoe. He tried to grab for it. And in doing so, he somehow managed to fit his body into this wrestling mat and he got stuck there. And that's why his cause of death was suffocation and he passed away. My questions with this theory are several. One being if Kendrick fell into this mat, how did no one see or hear it? There were groups of people that were walking through the gym right after Kendrick had walked away from where the surveillance footage can see. So if that was the case and there were people walking by, how come no one saw or heard anything? My second question is with the shoes that were found behind his leg, how did they get there? Like I said, there was one shoe found behind his head, which is why authorities believe that's the one he was trying to reach for. But then there's another pair of shoes found behind his leg. And the way it's described is as if the shoes were 
almost dropped on top of him after he had fallen into the mat. So it just makes me wonder how those shoes got there or if that's a natural thing that could happen. Now, the second theory we have here is that Kendrick's death was not an accident. Again, this is the theory that Kendrick's family believes. Kendrick's family believes that he was murdered and then placed into the wrestling mat to be a cover-up. My question with this theory is that how is it possible that during broad daylight, because remember it was 1.09 p.m., how is it possible that during broad daylight he was murdered and placed into a wrestling mat without anyone hearing or seeing him? Kendrick did not show up to his last class that day. He had one class left in the rest of the school day that he did not attend. So he wasn't at his last class. Class, and he also didn't go to that basketball sports event that he was planning on going to in the early evening hours. So he didn't attend either of those things. So if we're following this theory, it kind of leaves this empty gap of space of what happened. Hendrick was seen walking into this gym and he was never seen walking out. Again, you have to keep in mind the weird gaps in the surveillance video footage, the fact that the cameras just aren't recording at certain points of time. My one thought with this theory is that if Kendrick ended up getting into a fight with someone, whether it was over a girl or whatever. If Kendrick ended up getting into a fight with someone, he got hit in the back of the head, which caused the blunt force trauma, which was his cause of death. And in order to cover it up, he was placed in the mat. My thought with this is maybe it happened at night. Then I still have the question of, well, why didn't he go to his last class? And why didn't he go to the sports game that was happening later that night that he was planning on going to? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. The timeline doesn't make any sense. The other thing I can't really wrap my head around is the autopsy. Did Kendrick die from suffocation or did he die from blunt force trauma? The last two autopsies that concluded that Kendrick died from blunt force trauma were done by William Anderson. So they were conducted by the same pathologist. So I'm curious if there was a third opinion given what the autopsy result would come back with. I don't know where I stand on this case. I think that this case is way bigger than Kendrick just climbing on top of wrestling mats and falling inside of one that his shoulders don't even fit through. I think that there is more to it than that. However, do I I think that someone premeditated this entire plan to murder Kendrick and then put him in a wrestling mat. I don't think I believe that either. So I really don't know what I believe, which is why I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. So let me know in the comments below all your thoughts, all your theories. I'll try to have all those links in the description box below for you guys, like I mentioned throughout the video. And with that being said, you guys, that is all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning into another true crime video here on my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name's Savannah. I make videos three days a week, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. You should subscribe and join the family. I love you guys so much and I'll be back in a couple days with a brand new video. Bye guys.